Morning guys. It's a beautiful morning down here. Spring is coming in the UK and it's absolutely glorious. I've just come down here to sit on the wall. I'm lucky enough to live by the water. Got myself a coffee, croissant, breakfast. But I wanted to have a chat with you guys about looking after your camera equipment. Because I've had a lot of people say to me, what do you do? How do you care for your equipment? How often is it safe to clean a lens, for example? I have these questions regularly. So I thought, well, let's just come and have a little chat while I have my breakfast. The bottom line is camera equipment is a lot more rugged and a lot tougher than many people believe it to be. You can sling it around quite a lot. Um, I'm not suggesting you do that, by the way. Don't go and throw your camera across a car park and say, Brown, you said I could throw it around. It's not that rugged. But for example, one of my D300s, I dropped it one day. I had it at eye level and then something happened. I fumbled and dropped it straight onto some tarmac. Um, you know, the camera was fine. Uh, the lens was fine as well. It didn't land on the glass. There's a crack in the camera body, but it didn't make any difference. It still worked. It gave many years of good service. Now, some people may not be so lucky. I am the luckiest guy in the world. I completely understand that. But kit is more rugged than many of us think. Um, for example, the question, how often is it safe to clean the lens? Well, clean it as often as you need to. You can clean it a lot. Think about it. Glass is pretty rugged, tough stuff, really, isn't it? Look, let me have a dig around in here. I want to show you something. I have got somewhere in my bag. Here we go. I'm good at losing stuff, aren't I? Look, right here, I've got a wine glass, okay? It's just ordinary wine glass glass. If I take a fork and just do that on it, there is not a mark, even holding that into the light. There is not a mark on that glass. So why would it mark your lens? Because lens glass is gonna be considerably more rugged. I mean, I can feel some of you starting to cringe at this point, but if I, pop that lens hood off. Here we go, it's a Nikon F2.8 lens, a Nikkor 28 lens. If I, see, I can, you can hear it. I'm not pretending. And if I hold that into the light, there's not a mark on it, you know? They're pretty tough. Of course, I'm not bashing and gouging and scratching the thing because, you know, that would be ludicrous, wouldn't it? Now, this of course brings us on to the old question of UV skylight filters. Um, lots of people use them. I'm personally not a big fan. I don't like UV uh, skylight filters at all. Why? Because I've spent all this money on a beautifully prepared, beautifully ground piece of glass. A very, very expensive lens indeed. And even though the glass in a UV skylight filter is pretty good quality, for me it's still like Looking through a window, I put all the money on the lens, why would you then just go and shoot through a window, you know? I don't want anything between my lens and, and what's being photographed. My preferred choice is something along the lines of a uh, uh, lens hood. If you've got a good quality deep lens hood going on on the front there, you're doing a lot of protection. Nothing can touch that. For example, my fingers can't touch it by accident. If I chuck it in the bag without the, the, the cap on, you know, it's not gonna touch the edge of the bag. So if there's any greasy marks or anything, you're not gonna get them on your glass. I much prefer these. I had a, a camera fall off a tripod from quite high up like this one day, and it landed glass first into a car park. The lens hood took the brunt of it. There wasn't a mark on the glass. It smashed the lens hood, but um, the glass was fine. Unfortunately, the weight of the camera body behind it also trashed the autofocus mechanism inside the lens, but the glass was absolutely dandy. I recommend you use these things all the time, not only for protection, but because you are shading your lens. You see, if I hold that there, you can see the sun's over there but my lens hood is stopping light hitting onto the glass if I turn it that way we've got light going straight up the lens depends if you're worried about lens flare or not so what do you use to clean the lens what do I use to clean the lens is is usually the question some of you may be horrified about this but I have two absolute favorites one is bog standard ordinary old-fashioned kitchen roll not toilet roll kitchen roll you know the stuff you use for mopping up spillages on your on your work surfaces <clears throat> it's pretty good because it's one use only it doesn't leave little bits of dust like toilet roll or tissue paper does and i like it because unlike the little tiny squares of lens cleaning tissue which you can buy you know it's it's solid i can get a good old wadge of this stuff and and give the glass a blooming good old rub whereas the little tiny fiddly bits of tissue paper you know I can give that a good old rub with those little tiny pieces. I find I'm holding it between my 
fingertips and it's, oh, it's horrible. It's a complete pain to try and work with. Also, of course, I've got little bits of paper littering up my bag and I've got a fine place to dispose of them. I don't like it. My other is uh, a microfiber. And now, I don't even use a microfiber um, lens cloth. I just use a microfiber dishcloth. I bought this one in a supermarket in Iceland uh, on the last workshop because I hadn't got anything to lens with. Um, yes, I know, there's all sorts of talk about how these things attract and hold sand, which can damage your lens. Yeah, I get the point. I've never actually had it happen to me. And, you know, bear in mind, I was working in Iceland, a windy place on black sand beaches. Um, but the thing is, don't get sand on it, you know? Don't leave it lying around on a beach. Try not to do that. There are gonna be occasions when there's sand in the air and it will get on there. But uh, what, well, I don't know, next to nothing each. Just have four or five of them. If you're in that environment, clean. Use it once or twice, make sure you fold it over so you're not using the same patch. Put it in the bag, wash it, but get out another one, you know? Just use this bit. Use your first building block of photography because really all this stuff is common sense. Cleaning fluids, what do I clean the glass with? I don't use cleaning fluids. Um, I don't like them, I just find I get a smeary mess. I've never found one yet that I, I like using. Um, I use a, a special substance, a special process. It, it's, it's called huff and rub. Um, it's available everywhere. I huff on the glass and then I give it a damn good rub. Um, and that's about all I've ever found I need. Now notice I'm pushing quite hard because I don't want to make sure there's no greasy smears on there. That's absolutely dandy. And even though I just tinged it with a, with, with a fork, there's not a mark on it. Camera kit's pretty rugged. Don't worry about it quite so much. What else did I write down here to talk to you about? Body cleaning. Never really bothered to clean the bodies. Um, I know, yeah, I kind of work professionally and, and I'm not looking to, to maintain a resale value on my cameras. I, I, I keep them, use them until they're either outdated or dead. Um, and then I try and find a home for them. I've lost my lens cap now, I'm good at this. Um, but yeah, body cleaning, I never really have bothered. The only occasions I have is when using a camera in a, in a salt spray environment, like, you know, a windy day by the sea, you are gonna have salt spray in the air. It's probably a good idea to get that off. All I would use again is a bit of this type of kitchen roll or something, little tiny bit of just damp, just make it damp with some, you know, warm water and just give it a little gentle rub over the top like that. That's about all I've ever done. Um, what else was I thinking about? Uh, lens changing. This is one because, of course, care of your camera extends to not getting stuff on the sensor inside the camera. Now, as many of you know, I shoot with a Fuji mirrorless system. Now, there's no mirror to protect the sensor at all. And once you get bits of dirt on the sensor, it's on the sensor. But don't be afraid to change your lenses. Again, just use this. Just think through how you do things. If you've got your camera this way up when you change your lens, what is likely to happen? Yeah, stuff's going to land in it. Especially down here by the sea, there's gulls flying around. What happens if a gull does its business and that goes in there? Ugh, horrible mess. Can you imagine that flapping around as the mirror goes up and down in my DSLR? Don't have your camera that way up when you change the lens. Do it that way up. For a start, you're stopping stuff landing in there. Try not to do it in a dusty, windy environment. So my method would be, let's say I'm going to change lenses. Here we go. Here's a, another lens. I would loosen the... I've done it up too tight, the back cap, camera that way up, sorry, that way up, undo, that lens in, back cap onto the other lens, keeping it face down so stuff can't land in there, and job done, you know, minimising the chance of stuff going into the camera. Okay, I hear you say, yeah, but what about stuff going into the back of the lens while I'm holding it this way up? It's really easy to clean a rear element on a lens, but it's much, much more complicated to clean the sensor on your camera, you know? Um, again, it's just, you can't avoid some dust going in there. That's just the way life is, you know? That's probably about all I had to say with it. Really, my point was, I don't want you guys to get too hung up worrying that your camera is going to get damaged. Yeah, I understand there is a resale um, issue for some of you where you, you, you want to sort of, you're not sure what you've got. You want to make sure it's in good condition if you want to part exchange it or resell it. Um, but camera equipment is considerably more rugged than many of you think. There is one more thing I want to talk about. Condensation. This comes back to me from Iceland. Let's think. You're out in the cold. Your camera body is cold. You take it into a warm environment, particularly if you just boiled the kettle, what's likely to happen? Condensation. 
it's like if you get a can of beer out the fridge, you know, it's really cold, you bring it outside on a warm, sort of balmy, sunny day, it's gonna get condensation all over it. Now, in most cases, it's not really gonna damage the camera because most cameras have some level of weatherproofing on them. But you don't wanna go taking your lens off in that environment. I did it again in Iceland, shot something outside, really, really cold, jumped in the van, we drove up the road. Oh, look, there's something, I needed a different lens. Didn't think because I was talking to someone, not paying attention, I'm good at that. Pop the lens off. Now the Fuji I had with me, of course, that's mirrorless. And I instantly got some condensation onto the sensor. I didn't realize until I put the camera up to my eye and thought, why does everything look all milky white? I was lucky, I managed to dry it out and we had a sensor cleaning kit, we gave it a clean, all good. But just think about these things, you know. Um, make sure your camera warms up a bit before you open it if you're in a humid environment and the body's cold. Other than that, that's probably, I think, all there is to say about it. That's, that's really all I do, and I've gone as in-depth as I possibly can in discussing how I look after my cameras. Um, that's probably all there is to it. That's a blooming big woodpecker, wouldn't it? I don't know if you heard that. But anyway, enjoy the weather, guys. Enjoy the summer if you're in the UK. Enjoy life if you're anywhere else. Don't panic too much about your camera equipment. It's pretty sturdy. Just enjoy it. Go out, shoot some pictures. Cross on time. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified each time we upload one of our cool photography videos or for more great photo tips, workshops and training, come and see us at our website, photographycourses.biz.